If you were walking the streets of San Francisco's Castro District in the early, mid-1980s, probably you would have run into a man named Peter Berlin. He is the subject of a new exhibit, his work and his form, being presented by Magnet. Our conversation now with its curator, Eric Smith. Hi. How are you? Good. Great to be here. Thanks you for You know, having me. I remember vividly the first time I saw Peter Berlin in the Castro. He was leaning against a fire hydrant at 18th and Castro. And it's kind of like that line from uh, the James Bond film where Sean Connery turns to Eve Marie Saint and says, that's a lovely little nothing you're almost wearing. <laughs> I mean, I really can't describe what Peter was wearing, but it was definitely transparent and there was a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. How did he get away with it? You know, it was the 70s, you know, in the United States, and it was sexual liberation, and it was gay liberation was evol emerging, and it was Polk Street and the Castro, and um, it was kind of an open environment here for him to kind of explore his sexual nature and emerging as Peter Berlin. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I blinked, but you know, I was a kid from the sticks in Virginia, but I mean, no one else seemed to think anything of it. But Peter Berlin became, as Michael McHale, our producer, described him, the world's first selfie. Yeah. He turned himself into a career. Well, what a lot of people don't know, they look at these images of him, him and say, who took the photos? And it's like, he did. He was the photographer. He was the stylist. He was the clothing designer, you know, and he did his own negatives, he did it his own prints, and he was a one-man show, and the, really the only person that photographed him other than himself was Robert Maplethorpe, who was a good friend of his. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, there are thousands and thousands of self-portraits, and this is a time before digital where it was so easy just to kind of like right. pop a picture of yourself and download it and send it, you know, he spent hours setting up a shot. The double exposures, which you'll see in the show, mm -hmm. are great examples of how he really, you know, set a stage for himself, dressed himself, photographed himself, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, and this was done over the course of probably two to three decades. Right. So let's go back. Let's yeah. do a chronology. Who is Peter Berlin? Because he's still with us. Peter Berlin was born in 1942 in Germany, um, you know, in the height of the war. In fact, the swastika, unfortunately, is embedded on his birth certificate. But this is the world he was born into. Mm -hmm. um, he came to the United States in the late 60s um, and came, I think, through New York and then to California and San Francisco, where he's been most of the time. And here he kind of developed the persona of Peter Berlin, partly because no one could pronounce his real name, which is Baron Armin Friar von Hoenigen Hune. <laughs> is that the first last name? Is that what that's that's his entire name. Wow. Yeah. So it was a lot easier for him for people just to Peter uh -huh. and then Berlin. Right. Now he would describe himself as openly gay, correct? Yeah. Would he describe himself as a professional exhibitionist? I don't think he would describe himself as a professional anything. <laughs> if you talk to Peter, no, seriously, because what he did was all solely really for the pursuit of his sex life and sexuality. As he says, well, it was the potent. photographs were just incident. He says, oh, I got dressed up to go out and to cruise, and I looked in the mirror, and I thought, oh, this looks good. Took out the camera and started taking pictures. Right, right. Listen, there are a lot of people who think they look good <laughs> naked and take pictures of themselves, but, you know, all kidding aside, Peter Berlin, if you came of age as a gay man in the 1970s or 80s and you went to any of the major metropolitan quote unquote gay ghettos mm -hmm. in the United States, you would be hard pressed not to see an image of Peter Berlin or have heard about one of his films like Nights in Black Leather. Mm -hmm. What made him this sexual icon? Well, he put himself out on the streets people would see him. He recorded these images which got out there and for a while he supported himself through selling his images mm -hmm. through mail order like a lot of you know people did in, so he was in an the entrepreneur. 70s. A little bit but you know um, you know yeah he kind of put them out there and he kind of redefined 
male, the male sexual image. Well, that's my point that I'm going after. I mm -hmm. mean, there are, you know, people talk about Tom of Finland, who did a lot of erotic drawings. And Drew and, Peter. And Drew Peter. Yeah. And so back during a time when, quote unquote, gay liberation wasn't what it is now, when images, sexualized images of gay men were in the closet, in brown paper bags, Peter Berlin, boy, he was many things, but in a bag and in a closet, he wasn't. Yeah, he put it out there. And yes, he was chased by police. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't all, you know, glory, but he'll tell you it was the best time of his life. Mm -hmm. And now he's 71. How does he look? I think he looks great. He doesn't want to look in the mirror, and he'd rather, actually, if he were sitting here, he'd rather have a paper bag. Mm -hmm. over but is he still head. doing the long blonde hair? Yes, and he still looks good. He's in good shape. Um, I spend a lot of time with him. I met him about 10 years ago through Lawrence Hellman, um, mm -hmm. um, PR extraordinaire, um, and he worked on the Peter Berlin documentary. And through that, I met Peter and became friends with him. And um, literally, I I have lunch with him five to six days a week mm -hmm. and we talk we talk about life he's lived on the outside mm -hmm. you know kind of of our culture out of gay society mm -hmm. out of you know general society and he has very interesting views about the world you know that he sees and um, so we've become really close friends and in the course of that friendship I kind of realized if something should happen to you what's going to happen to this to archive your, right and he goes, I don't care, throw it out, you know, in the garbage with me. So he doesn't me. feel like, that he, he doesn't believe that he's created some sort of he knows cultural it. or historic legacy? I think he knows it, but he doesn't have a strong attachment to that mm -hmm. and to preserving it. So I've kind of, by default, <laughs> started taking on this, you know, role as a friend to kind of make sure that at least while he's alive and while I'm alive we're going to keep yeah. this thing organized and going so one of the things I'm doing aside from out there looking for archives in the future that may be interested in mm -hmm. helping to receive this archive and preserve it is to start doing shows and right, um, put right, his right. work out there. So the first show is at Magnet which is a yes. gallery space. Yes in the uh, Castro. Among other things. Yeah. Uh, in San Francisco Castro District on 18th near Castro. Yeah. Tell me about the show, what's in it, when is it, and how long does it run? It uh, runs for the whole month of October. Opening night ceremony, which is going to be a mob scene, I think, um, is uh, Friday, October 3rd from 8 to 10. Um, and then we also are having a special evening on Saturday, October 18th from 7 to 9. Um, it's going to be a conversation called Peter Berlin Talks. And I'm Which he doesn't do much. No, but I he's mean, got his film, I mean, he does a lot of, he does other things, but he doesn't talk. Exactly. So <laughs> this is an opportunity for people to kind of hear him, you know, where he is in his life right now, yeah. looking back on the years, you know, and talking about who knows what will come up. Right. Um, the show is going to be probably anywhere from 15 to 20 images that we've uh, mostly pulled from his archive and mm -hmm. some we're going to be doing some new prints, um, mostly then, but a few now because right, right, right. he still does point the camera you know and takes um, photos. So we still have Peter Berlin the photographer out there. Yeah. But he's not still photographing himself. He does on occasion. And is any of that going to be in there? Yes. There will be, so he's still kind of... That's got to be a first, because when you think of Peter Berlin, it's always young and blonde and, well, you know. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, how he kind of records Peter Berlin. Getting you older. Know. Yeah. Well, see, this is my point about why I think Peter Berlin is interesting. I've always found him interesting because in a world in which sexualized heterosexuality is Victoria's Secret or Last Tango in Paris, and right. no one's shocked by that, by those standards, really what Peter Berlin did is really kind of soft core. Well, and he turned it around. He said, you know, for years our culture I mean, has today, always been but about... today it wouldn't be considered hardcore porn. It would be considered an art film. But women have always been in that sex symbol position, and men have always had women sexualized to look up to. And now it's very interesting. Later in life, he has all these women that are, like, getting turned on to his images. From the 1970s and 80s. But currently, yes. Yeah. But that image of Peter Berlin that they never really had that kind of hypersexualized male figure. So it's kind of, he says, I've never had women in my life before. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. they're kind of coming to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in our last few minutes, talk to me about what he's 
it's like as a person. Not the image, not the photographer, not the artist. When you sit and talk to him, I mean, is he interested in history? Does he talk about how life has changed from being born under the regime of Adolf Hitler to mm -hmm. being a 71-year-old man who's probably one of the most sexualized gay images of the last 50 years? Yeah, he, you know, we've talked about all of that, and he's very open. He's a very kind of quiet, private person. He's, he's very much one-to-one, -one. Mm -hmm. you know, in a group, you know, that's not really his thing. But one-to-one, -one, if you engage him in a conversation, if you start talking about the 70s and the good times, he'll go on forever because he was there. He lived it, you know, really 24-7. You know, practically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he was about as much a fixture at 18th and Castro yeah. as the uh, the Chronicle lady, you know, that sold Chronicles there yeah. for, for 20 years. But at the same time, he is 71. Mm -hmm. He lived through the AIDS crisis. He mm -hmm. lost his very, very core, very small, close group of friends who were his brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that affected him. I think aging is something that, um, you know, for gay men is, and for everyone, but gay men, you know, in particular, uh -huh. is not easy, and mm -hmm. he's not happy about it, mm -hmm. but um, he continues to just, to just be. Yeah. Do you think that's one of the reasons why, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I would say that his image and his name and the kind of iconographic nature of his image continues to last is because there's kind of a Peter Pan complex going on. We look at images of Peter Berlin and we're like, wow, that's what it looked like to be young and gay in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very interesting that there's kind of this whole new, younger set of people that are finding him and finding out about him and what he did and what he created and are writing about him and talking about him. So it's almost like a rediscovery, mm -hmm. you know, that's happening with um, a whole younger generation that's looking back because it is such a, you know, um, an eye-pleasing experience to, you know, visit that era you know, yeah. through his photographs. No, I mean, he's easy on the eyes. Or yeah. His image, and there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I can see why women would like him and men too. And this is an uncensored photo exhibition, perfect for the Castro. <laughs> you know, there will be um, G, R, and X. X rated. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thanks yeah, for yeah. speaking with us. Yeah, thank you. We've been speaking with Eric Smith about the exhibit that I can't wait to see of works by and of Peter Berlin. Next up, from the profane to the sacred, our conversation with Karen Suntime, Program Director of the James C. Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center at the San Francisco Public Library. We'll be right back.